Stop. Before you fall for the allure of the size and grandeur of the so-called gentle giant, you need to be aware of what you're getting yourself into. Mastiffs can be magnificent companions, but acquiring a powerful giant breed dog is a huge commitment not to be taken lightly. In this video, I'm going to give you a short true, false, true or false quiz to see how much you know about the English Mastiff and to help you determine whether this is the dog breed for you. But don't worry, we won't be calculating your final grade until the entire series on the Mastiff is complete. No need to take notes. I've got all of the information and much more in the blog posts linked in the description below. If you are new here, my name is Stephanie, AKA Big Dog Mom. And on my channel, I provide information and resources to help you and your big dog live your best life together. So if you have an interest in learning more about the truths and the myths about English Mastiffs, stick with me. Consider subscribing to my channel, turning on your notifications, and hit that like button if you like this video. All right, let's begin this short quiz. For those of you who are new to my channel, I have been a Mastiff owner for the better part of my adult life. A long time. In all, I have been blessed with four Mastiffs, two of whom you see here today. Junior, over here, who will be five in October, and Sully, right here, who will be seven in December. All of what we are about to cover comes from my vast experience with the Mastiff breed. To be clear, when I use the term Mastiff, I'm referring to the Mastiff, also known as English Mastiff or Old English Mastiff. It is important to make that distinction as while there are many uh, Mastiff breeds, I say lowercase m Mastiff breeds or types of Mastiffs, there is only one Mastiff. Okay, here's your first question. Is the English Mastiff the largest breed of dog? This one is absolutely true. If by largest you mean overall size, Irish Wolfhounds take the award for the tallest breed of dog. Unfortunately, if you have spent any length of time searching for Mastiff information here on YouTube, you have likely come across many channels that tout their Mastiff size and weight. I find this marketing ploy very, very unfortunate for the Mastiff breed as it does nothing to promote proper health, temperament, and adherence to the Mastiff breed standard. That said, let's cover quickly some facts as it relates to Mastiff size. The English Mastiff is a giant breed dog characterized by a, a well-muscled, big-boned, rectangular body that gets its height from depth of chest rather than length of leg, with a short double coat of fawn, apricot, or brindle stripes. Average height and weights vary by sex, with adult male Mastiffs reaching 30 plus inches at the withers and up to 230 pounds, and females slightly smaller at 27 and a half inches and 170 pounds. To give you some perspective, Junior fluctuates between 235 and 245 pounds. He likes to be called big boned. <laughs> Sully is at his healthiest weight, closer to 200. You can see the overall size and type difference between both adult males. Okay, on to question two. Mastiffs don't need much exercise, do they? This one is false, a big old false. The belief that Mastiffs don't need much exercise is one of those myths about Mastiffs that I have found to just not be true. It is true that Mastiffs don't have the energy level of a Labrador Retriever, an Alaskan Malamute, or a Border Collie. However, it is a total misconception that Mastiffs prefer to just lay around all day or that even a sedentary lifestyle is enough to maintain a healthy, fit dog. Every Mastiff I have owned has jumped at the chance to go for a walk or a hike or a swim. They prefer to be active with their people, and some, like Sully, prefer to be very active. And here's the thing, they are healthier when they are. Keep in mind, like with many other working breed dogs, when not given a job to do, a Mastiff will find one. I wrote in a blog post entitled, Seven Most Common Mastiff Myths, Facts from Life with a Giant. Quote, Mastiffs are a working breed. They need exercise, a lot of it. These activities include continuous and regular socialization, obedience training, and access to green space to run and play for muscular and cardiovascular health. If you think a Mastiff will be happy lounging around your studio apartment from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. while you are away at work, the slobbery bits of paper and wood chips from your furniture will be evidence to the contrary. End quote. Speaking of Mastiffs being working breed dogs, let's move on to question number three. Are Mastiffs guard dogs? This one is true. As one of the oldest domestic dog breeds, Mastiffs descended from ancient Alant and Molisser dogs. They were developed in England and nearly became extinct after World War II. 
following the outlawing of bull baiting and bear baiting in 1835. With a long history of both fighting in the arena in ancient Rome to guarding estates and castles in Britain, mastiffs were bred for a very important purpose, to guard and protect. To expect anything less from the mastiffs of today is a mistake. Mastiffs were bred to be a guardian. Thus, the mastiff is a natural guard dog, no guard dog, dog training required. As they see it, they are a watchdog over their home and their people. For example, when someone knocks when someone comes to the door, a mastiff will confidently approach to ensure the safety of his home and his people, exuding strength, not insecurity. Any level of aggression, reactivity, or physical contact, i.e. lunging or jumping, are not appropriate or characteristic of the breed. A mastiff should be even-tempered and self-assured. All right, let's move on. Mastiffs are not expensive, are they? If only this one were true. This one is false. Beyond the purchase price, English Mastiffs are very expensive to own and care for. Everything costs more. You can expect to pay 10 to 50% more for everything. Bigger Kongs, bigger collars, bigger bags of treats, and lots more food. I do the happy dance, literally, if I'm able to escape the vet for less than $300. And that's if my Mastiffs are healthy. And when you factor in a large number of potential health concerns with mastiffs, such as hip dysplasia, eye disorders, and cancer, all bets are off. Your costs of mastiff ownership just exploded. Put it this way, if you are going to be on a payment plan just on the purchase of your mastiff, then this is not the breed for you. There are a few blog posts linked below that you may want to check out. One about how to save money on pet medications and another about the annual cost of big dog ownership. Not specific to mastiffs, but big dogs. In addition, the next video in this mastiff series will go into great detail about how much an English mastiff costs. Stay tuned for that in the next week or so. All right, next question. Question number five. Are mastiffs great with kids? This one I marked true and false. Mastiffs can be great with kids, but not all are. The fact of the matter is the relationship between children and dogs goes both ways. Dogs need to be socialized around children from an early age, if possible, in a safe way. Children must be taught what they should and shouldn't do around dogs and how to be respectful of their space. The quality of being good with children is not developed in the womb. Mastiffs are sensitive and naturally protective. They want to be a guardian for your children too, but not at the expense of their bodily autonomy when threatened by disrespectful children. I believe one of the greatest responsibilities we as parents have is to teach our children empathy and respect for others, including our pets. My advice is to teach your children about canine body language. Children need to be taught how to respect a dog's personal space and develop an awareness of the range of signals dogs exhibit that tell us how they, were, how they are feeling. Even children as young as two or three can observe and interpret when a puppy is afraid or understand that when a teething puppy bites, they are not trying to be mean. So no, not all Mastiffs are great with kids, but all well-bred English Mastiffs have the potential to be a child's best friend. All right, we're in the final, final stretch. If you are getting value from this information, take a second and hit the like button. Here's your next question. Are Mastiffs wary of strangers? Yep, this one is absolutely true. Mastiffs are extremely sensitive, as I've mentioned before, and are eternally loyal and protective of their family. As such, they have a natural wariness of strangers, so early training and socialization are essential. They view all people outside their family as potential foe until they have determined that they are a friend. A proper Mastiff temperament will make this decision in a split second, taking in all available information around them to assess the risk. For example, as I mentioned a minute ago, a front door greeting with a friendly stranger usually starts with a few barks to alert us that someone is there. A, a peek outside to see who it is, and in our new house, a, a bit of a competition to see who can greet the friendly stranger first. If you wanna see a good demonstration of proper front door manners, I'll put a card above and a link to my video on that in the description. Stay tuned for my front door manners number two, since we just moved into a new home and are back at square one, <laughs> as you can see. But here's what the American Kennel Club says about the proper Mastiff temperament. Quote, Mastiff's temperament should be a combination of grandeur and good nature, courage and docility. 
Dignity rather than gaiety is the Mastiff's correct demeanor. Judges should not condone shyness or viciousness. Conversely, judges should also be aware of putting a premium on showiness. A Mastiff should be confident, self-assured, even tempered and predictable. They should react to new people and situations with dignity and gentleness. If you are considering a Mastiff, you need to know that not all Mastiffs have this ideal temperament and far too many are shy and reactive. Picture a Mastiff constantly turning his head in reaction to sounds and stimuli, barking beyond a warning bark, jerking his leash or cowering, paranoid about the world around him, or even worse, a Mastiff that is aggressive or vicious. An English Mastiff with a proper temperament does none of these things. He is self-assured in his skin and his ability to guard his castle and his people, understanding that it is his presence alone that will deter evildoers, not br brute force. If you are considering a Mastiff, my advice from personal experience is to be very, very picky when it comes to temperament. All right, next question. Are Mastiffs stubborn and hard to train? This one is false. People often describe Mastiffs as stubborn and difficult to train. I just couldn't disagree more with that characterization. Mastiffs are actually very easy to, easy to train when it's on their terms. Mastiffs have a, a strong desire to please you, however, not at the expense of whatever is capturing their interest at the moment. People often mistake their disobedience with stubbornness. For example, the simple, the simple command, come, may or may not result in a Mastiff sitting in front of you. It all depends. While they are certainly not Border Collies or Belgian Malinois, they are a highly trainable breed. They have been known to excel in just about every dog sport there is. With a little time, treats, and a clicker, Mastiffs are an eager and responsive student. But please beware, Mastiffs are extremely sensitive, and as such, they respond best to positive training methods, not harsh ones. So the use of shock and choke collars, or using any other harsh methods, are not necessary or recommended. In my experience, Mastiffs respond better when training is fun and entertaining. Let me boil this down. You want my advice? <laughs> be the person your Mastiff wants to be around, and you will have a friend for life. Thank you, Sully. Moving on to number eight. Are Mastiffs me messy dogs to live with? <laughs> I, I honestly don't even know how to answer this one. Let me put it this way. If you are a clean freak or a germaphobe, do not buy a Mastiff. Seriously, just don't. I have said many times that because I'm a mother and a big dog owner, I just can't have nice things. Everything I own has either dog hair or slobber on it. Here's a funny story. What, once when I was fully dressed in my business suit, heading out the door for work, I let the, the dogs out to go potty for the last time before I left. Junior slurped up a bunch of water, and as I bent down to wipe, it, to wipe him, he shook his giant head. Yep, slimy dog slobber all, all over my mascara and hair. It was so disgusting, yet so unbelievable that I just had to laugh. Just one of the many joys of big dog ownership. So no, if you are looking for a clean dog, a Mastiff is not the dog for you. On to number nine. Do Mastiffs eat a lot? This one's true and false. How much does a Mastiff eat? is one of the most common questions I get. I answered this one with another true and false because it really depends on what you are feeding and how old your Mastiff is. When compared to smaller breeds, two unique factors about the way Mastiff puppies grow make them more prone to skeletal problems. They grow faster, number one, and number two, they remain puppies longer. A Mastiff puppy can grow from just under a pound at birth to well over 150 pounds in a year. That's a whopping 150-fold increase in size in just 12 months. And while this rapid growth means the bones must change quickly, a factor that can put them at risk of forming improperly, it also means that the caloric needs of a Mastiff puppy must meet the needs of their fast-growing body. That said, you can definitely have too much of a good thing. Mastiff puppies should be kept lean to prevent undue stress on growing bones and joints. Once a Mastiff has hit their has hit about 12 to 18 months old, their food consumption will drop substantially and equal what most other larger giant breed dogs are eating. If you are feeding a raw diet, Mastiff puppies are typically fed 10% of their current body weight or two to 3% of their ideal adult weight per day, while adult Mastiffs will be fed anywhere from two to 3% of their body weight or less per day, depending on their activity level. 
So for Sully, he is eating about four pounds of raw a day, most days split between two meals, not counting fasting days. Junior eats slightly more than that. When they were both eating kibble, Sully was eating about four to five cups per day and Junior slightly more. If you remember just one thing from this video, I want it to be this. A mastiff size is and should be determined by genetics. They should be fed what they need for optimal health, not for how big you want them to be. Beware of those, especially here on YouTube, glorifying their mastiff's obesity with an unhealthy obsession with mastiff size and weight. Now, since what goes in must come out, let's cover the second most frequently asked question I get when I'm out with my mastiffs. Number 10, do mastiffs poop a lot? This one is true and false. <laughs> As I said, what goes in must come out. And you might think that with a horse-sized dog, they would have horse-sized poop, but that is actually not the case in my experience. I have found the amount of stool generated is directly correlated to what you are feeding, not necessarily how much you are feeding. Kibble-fed dogs generate substantially more poop than raw-fed dogs. When Junior and Sully were eating kibble over the last nine months, they each pooped on average twice a day, morning and evening. When Mastiffs are fed a raw diet, they may, they may pass a stool once a day and not every day. Additionally, on kibble, Junior and Sully would leave a voluminous pile for me to clean up each time. However, when they are eating a raw diet, their poop is more similar to a small breed dog. I will be sharing much more about raw feeding large and giant breed dogs, so stay tuned if that's a topic that interests you. The next video in this series will discuss the cost of owning a Mastiff, from the purchase price to feeding to healthcare. If you have any questions about this video or about the cost of English Mastiff ownership, put them in the comments below and we can chat more about it. How much does it truly cost to raise a mighty Mastiff? Find out in the next video. And who knows, your question or comment just may show up in my next video. And with that, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in our next video. Bye for now. As one of the oldest domestic dog breeds, Mastiffs descended D Mastiffs des descended. <laughs> I do know how to talk. <laughs> this is not good for me. Oh no, oh no, oh no. He's getting a little too excited. Hold on. <laughs> Journey, come here. Hold on, come here. Oh boy, don't get me all dirty. Hold on. You can't be in it. In the video with yuckies in your eyes, so. Yo. Sully, lay down. So, okay. Whoa! Oh my gosh. Sully! It's totally wet now. Oh, your face is so dirty, Sully! Ah! Gosh! Sully! So, come. Tell me. Oh, gross, Sully. Your whole eye is so dirty now. Oh, gross. Oh, yeah. I can't. Junior, chill. I just can't stay clean to save my life. Stay here, June. <laughs>